Already? This is... Mother's brooch. You always wore this. You wouldn't take it off unless... You left it here for a reason. What am I not seeing? Another breadcrumb? Hmm? That is quite dark and deep in. Oh, good job! <laughs> Not so sweet, Corvus. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't collapse on me now. Unbelievable how such a weak, like, I just hit one of the supporting beams in there and the whole thing collapses. This is why it's dangerous to go into abandoned mines. Edward! Huh? Edward! Huh? Elizabeth? Is that? I don't trust is it until you? I see it. This is Edward? probably a vision. Where are you? I'm on my way, Betty. Wait for me. This is not real. But I will bite. I will bite. Stay where you are. I'm coming. Sound is coming from even further away now. Something is luring me away. This curse, if you will. This must be some folklore entity luring me away. Mysterious. Edward? Where are you? Edward! I'm almost there! You are obviously running away. You obviously know I'm coming for you. Oh, you're you're taking me back to the to the house? Maybe it's just in my mind. Just stay put. I don't trust this Thank one God. bit. Wait. Is this the mannequin coming to life? <laughs> Which I called earlier at one point. Because I'm putting the pin on the... Elizabeth. There you are. Finally. <laughs> you have no idea how long I've been looking for you. You, you had me so worried. I... 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 Look, your brooch, mother's brooch. Y you must have lost it at the mine. Uh, let me put it on for you, Betty. I wouldn't want you to lose it again. She's been dead for 30 years, Edward. Elizabeth was never here. But we didn't come for her. We came for Johan, and Anna, and Frederick, and Simon, and... and Ruth. We're here to tell their stories. No. Elizabeth. She's here. I you know Betty died when she was a baby. 
she drowned in the pond. And you found her. You were just 11. You carried her to your mother. And your mother... She hated you for that. She could never forgive you for bringing her baby to her. And you could never forgive yourself for what she did after. You always forget this. Because you don't want to be alone. So you bring Betty back. Again. And again. To New York. To Boston. To the house. But always just out of reach. Never quite there. The scent of her. The echo of her. But never really her. All it does is make you lonelier. But the thing is, Edward, you're never alone. You have us. And you'll always have us. Betty's... She was never there for you. She couldn't be. You can't lose us. We're a part of you. Forever. And ever. Are you a figment of my imagination, and both ever. of you? How about you take over, Alice? <laughs> Attaboy, Teddy. You can do this. A figment of her imagination. But the box she drew. It looks like this box under her desk. Really? Let me see. Pull it out. Look at that. The Ethel becomes an Edward. I didn't think you had it in you, old fruit. Be quiet. There are only ghosts here. There are no ghosts. I don't know about that. What will you do? Ignore us? Banish us? But you need to let Betty go now. There's not room for all of us in there. I couldn't save you, Elizabeth. I'm so sorry. So that's just it is some... as painful to wake from a vision as it is to be born anew. So that was just a random photo of a star who we projected Beffy into. <laughs> so are are both of the both the statue and the other one just a figment of our imagination? The old random work coat and uh, and uh, oh, I'm so bad with names. Lizzie trying to reason. This hat does not look like hers at all. Coat doesn't look like hers. Nothing looks like it. But we turn everything into Betty's. Goodbye, Betty. Just a random crests that we found here. Goodbye. Oh. That is taking quite the tall, quite the weight off of chest and lungs, but still making for quite some exhaustion. I'm sorry I'm rambling. I, I feel a little bit exhausted. Hi. Why do you feel dizzy? <laughs> I connect. Are you up? I... Come outside. It's a beautiful day. Ah. Hello? You had your noodle juice yet? I might be weaned off the stuff. Boo. Don't lose your taste for tea, old fruit. It keeps you human. We have unfinished business. We do? The final piece of the puzzle. Ruth. Come on. Let's go back to where it started. We have an appointment with a ghost. So, are you? 
a thing made by imagination then? Or... I I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> Such an amazing view, isn't it? Oh, yes. And the air. Ugh. Boy, that sure is something. What did you want to show me? Come sit down. Why did we come here, Teddy? To Grovik. Well... Some places... have gravity. What are you saying? Gravik's gravity pulled us across the Atlantic Ocean? Grovik. No. I'm not saying that. That's irrational. But you believe it, don't you? That we were summoned to tell their story. letter to Frederick. The one you found in his safe. From Boston. I may have overheard a conversation somewhere. Paid it no attention, but the name stuck. And Betty... And I spun a story around it that put us on this path. Do you really believe that? I mean, how often are you around people? To find my sister. But Betty's not... She was never here. It doesn't make sense. I'm a man of science. I don't know what to believe. And yet, here we are. All three of us. Is this what you wanted to show me? I wanted to be close to her. Do you believe in ghosts, Edward? You know I don't. Well, you've been chasing one for years. That's different. What about me? Us. You're not ghosts. You're alive. Fair enough. So what really happened to Ruth? Um... I believe it was an accident. How? What happened? Your guess is as good as mine. Alright, she ran from the mine. And came here. And then... Was she afraid? What made her run? Uh, well, I'm gonna say mine. Playing, yeah, sure, and it's dangerous, but at the same time, oh, I don't know. Something spooked her. She saw Betty, and no, that's impossible. It was someone or something else. So she ran here. Why not home? She couldn't go home. Or she didn't want to. She felt safe here. This was her happy place. And then... If only Ruth had wings, like an angel, she could have flown straight to heaven. I hope she's at peace. And with God. Do you think that's where everyone's gone? Heaven. They're dead. I don't know what that means. Maybe there is more. I can't stop you from hoping. We'll never know what happened to everyone in Grovik. We tried our best. We'll remember them. All of them. Maybe that will give them some peace in the afterlife. Yeah. Could this be your book, Edward? The one you've been wanting to write? A story about people who are isolated. Left behind by the world. You can give them all a proper ending. With no annoying loose threads. Edward! Is that- a boat? But how? Who cares? Let's catch it before it sets out on another adventure. I don't understand how this can be. Dragon got tired of sailing around in it and brought it back to us. It must have been the wind. 
Whatever helps you sleep at night, teddy bear. Let's blouse, while the weather's still good. I need my suitcase. So get a wiggle on, old boy. I'm going to say my goodbyes to all the kids. I don't think we'll be back. Meet you at the house. I... My goodness. And she vanishes. Ah, <sighs> righty ho. No rush. We have all day. Ah, uh, this was the way, yeah. Ooh. We're gonna make one last drawing. I am um, bedazzled. I don't really know what to say at this point. I'm still trying to fathom it all. <sighs> Pretty. Oh yeah, right, right. Come on, Teddy. <laughs> Pack your things. I'll meet you by the boat. Do you never sit still? <laughs> Don't be a wet blanket. Let's make like the wind and get out of here. Okay. Oh god. There was like a sound when she vanished. And at the same time, this... I'm not used to seeing the mannequin in this reality. Like, with generic coats and everything. Uh, we will take this with us. As a little memory of the place in general. The gloves that we imagined you had look like Mickey Mouse gloves. <laughs> Uh, gloves, which these cartoons characters had all the time. I'll leave you here. <sighs> Goodbye, Betty. Goodbye, family. Thank you for letting me stay. All right. Come on, let's go. Row, Teddy, row. Row, Teddy, row. Okay. Here we go. I mean, if she's something, someone, um, a figment of my imagination, then she's like the quite opposite of me. Perhaps created on purpose because we get so exhausted so easily, and she's the pure opposite. Full of vitality, full of life, full of energy. The water's still cold. It's a fjord, Lissy. And it's almost winter. There'll be snow when we get back to Hanover. The house will be warm. 
Are we going to be all right, Edward? I think so. So where are we growing to? That was that then. Are you real? I mean, it sort of reassured me that you are a figment of my imagination, just how you still keep vanishing. And in the house, you said that we, like, we need to get Betty away from your mind. There's no place for her and us, referring to the statue as well. Like the religion. God. <sighs> but yeah, a very beautiful, beautiful game and experience. Thank you very much for watching. Tusen takk for at du gadde å se på denne let's playen. Ha en god natt. Edward and Alice will return. Well, if there's going to be a sequel to this, then I definitely cannot wait to play that. <laughs>